The Einstar changed the game for entry level 3D scanners and with their latest release, the Einstar Vega going completely wireless, it's got us wondering if this is all most people would ever need for their project cars. We'll give you a quick overview of the scanner and its key features, but we're not just going to talk specs. We're going to scan some real car parts, see how it performs and also check the accuracy. So it's hard to talk about the new Vega without talking about the original Einstar. We've already made a video comparing this to three other scanners in a similar price range, all under a thousand US dollars. And the original Einstar was our recommendation. While it was great, it did have a few drawbacks. Namely, it had a lot of cables connecting it to power and also your laptop and your laptop needed to be quite powerful to run it. The Vega is supposed to be a step up in performance, but it's also a completely wireless standalone unit, so it addresses those problems. It also has two scanning modes, HD and fast. So HD for small detailed parts where we want to spend a lot of time and get a really good scan, or fast mode where we want to scan a large area really efficiently. The Vega is roughly double the price of the original Einstar, but the difference in price may not be as large as you think if you factor in potentially upgrading your laptop to run the original Einstar. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the Vega. As we said before, it's a completely standalone wireless unit, so you're not going to be tethered to your laptop. It's got an 8 core CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and half a terabyte of storage. If that doesn't mean much to you, don't worry. All you need to know is it's quite a powerful little unit and it's got a really nice screen on the back as well. I think what's probably more important is the two scanning modes, the HD and the fast mode. So the fast mode uses infrared VCSEL or Vixel uh, as the light source and basically that's a commonly used technology that's used in most structured light 3D scanners. This is great for efficiently capturing data and dealing with a wide range of different conditions so it's great for working in the workshop. So the HD mode uses infrared MEMS or MEMS which is a very similar technology but it's essentially a tunable light source and that's better for finer detail and higher resolution but it is less efficient. So the idea here is flexibility, being able to cover all the bases when we're working on our project cars from very small detailed scans of smaller parts to taking larger scans of bigger parts or perhaps the entire car. So to test all of this, we took three scans of parts for our project cars. We started off with a relatively small scan, in particular being AP Racing six piston brake calipers. Brake calipers have relatively fine features, so we want to use a high resolution, especially for the likes of capturing around the edges of the brake pads, so we can line this up with the edge of the brake disc in our CAD software, also around the mounting holes if we want to then design some brake caliper brackets for example. When it came time to actually take the scan on that HD mode, I was quite surprised with how close you need to hold the scanner to the object. If you've ever done any scanning before, it'll feel quite unnatural how close you need to be. And even though the scanner tracks really well, it does take quite a lot of time to collect the data with such a small capture field. I did bump the resolution up from its default setting, so as you'd expect, the processing time to take the data from the point cloud to generating the mesh does take a hit, especially when you're capturing color texture. It can take anywhere from 20 to 60 minutes processing time for a part about this size. That kind of time frame isn't really uncommon for processing 3D scans, to be honest, unless you're working with a really powerful computer. And the results are totally worth it. If we check out the scan on my computer screen here, we can see that we have a lot of detail, nice crisp edges, and we have all the data that we need to be able to do some scan-based design. The next scan we took was of our medium sized part, in particular a B18C engine block from an Integra Type R, and we scanned this on both the fast and the HD mode so we could compare the two. Cast engine blocks are usually relatively easy to scan as they have light coloured matte surfaces, lots of geometric features to track, and also some precision machine features that we can use to check the accuracy of our scans, but we'll come back to this. So I scanned the B18 block on the fast mode first and in just a few minutes I had collected all the data I needed. Again I bumped the resolution up slightly to get the best of both worlds with the efficient scanning and capture of data but still getting the crisp edges and the details of the block. In contrast, the HD scan took 25 minutes to capture all the data and also a lot longer to process it. The resulting scan was a lot better though, with less noise on the surfaces and finer details. Both the fast and the HD scans are missing some data from the deeper parts of the block that are hard to capture areas. 
This is typical when using a structured light scanner and it is an area where laser scanners shine, but the holes in the resulting mesh files really aren't going to cause us any issues for our uses. You might be wondering how does accuracy play into this and does the HD mode actually offer better accuracy? So let's check. If we insert the mesh file into our Fusion software, we can then set up a plane on the top of the block. Then we can create a mesh section sketch through the cylinder bores. Then we can fit circles to the mesh section sketch, allowing us to measure the size and the spacing of the cylinder bores and compare these to physical measurements to check the accuracy. In the end, we were within about half a millimeter on all measurements, which is relatively good, especially when we back up any critical dimensions with physical measurements or allow for some tolerances in our design. There also wasn't any significant advantage of the HD mode when it came to the accuracy. Is this the best way to measure accuracy? No, it's not. Scanning companies get their quoted accuracy specifications from very controlled tests and mesh analysis software. But it is representative of an approach that we'll actually take in the workshop and what we can really expect when using these scanners on our project cars. The last scan we took was of a large part, or in this case actually an area, being the engine bay of our Honda CRX, and we took this scan on the fast mode. It scans like this where the fast mode and its wider capture area really shine, efficiently tracking and capturing data and dealing with uneven lighting. Not having to be tethered to the laptop or look at the laptop screen while scanning made the job a lot easier as well. I took the scan in about three minutes and I processed it on the recommended settings using the one-click scanning workflow to make the job as easy as possible. So overall it's looking pretty good, but if we zoom in you can clearly see the lack of resolution around the finer details like the um, strut top bolts here. And this might not be a problem depending on what you're working on, you could always crank up the resolution and just pay a small price in the processing time to get some of that resolution back. So what's the verdict? Well, while we were impressed with the original Einstart, this is a step up in the scanning experience and also the resulting scans. I think the ease of setup and scanning, being able to just go grab the scanner and take a good scan of whatever you're working on on your project car quickly means you're going to use it more and get more value from it. There's a clear difference between the HD and fast modes, the fast being super efficient and a great way to capture large areas like body panels or engine bays, and the HD being really precise with good resolution for those finely detailed mechanical parts. At the end of the day, both modes are in the same scanner, so you've got something that's going to cover all the bases for automotive projects, whether you're doing design work, custom fabrication, or reverse engineering. If you want to add 3D scanning to your toolset, head over to hpacademy.com where you can learn CAD, 3D scanning and a range of other topics.